right, number 62. Big week. Bo had his surgery. Yep. For those of you that uh, have been at the streams, you guys know he's doing well. Yep. First day was rough, though, in the sense yes. of the uh, the drugs. <laughs> yes. I've never seen him head in the wall like this. He's like, uh, but no, he's pretty good. This is the second one, so. It started with the ride out. That was the hard one. Yeah, the, the panting in the car. The, the ride out was the toughest, but. Digging his leg into my leg. Oh, was he? Oh, did you sit in the back with him? I noticed that. <laughs> yeah, it's too loud. <laughs> um, yeah, she noticed that. Anytime you sit in the back with him, right, he sits on your legs. Yeah. When he's upset, he digs the legs in. <laughs> it hurts. Uh, so what, what's the recovery time for that? It's 12 weeks. 12 weeks. So two weeks he's walking, and then 12 weeks he can, like, really run. Technically, uh, in twelve weeks he can do a light jog, and he could start doing stairs and whatnot. I think eight to twelve weeks he could start oh, doing stairs. Really? Oh, I didn't yes. realize it was that long. I yeah, don't remember no it being that long for his first one. It was about eight weeks. So oh. he could do stairs? Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. They can't. That's supposed to go up. There. I was trying to do the math. How long ago was that? Was that two years ago? Uh, twenty twenty three. Uh, twenty twenty. Was that mid COVID? Yes. We were oh, okay. COVID, so yeah, two yeah. years ago. God, it felt so 2021, much 2021, February 2021, he has. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's the left right. side and then the right side. Yeah. So his leg's pretty messed up. I didn't want to show you guys the pictures, but it's pretty pretty ugly. But he's Well, I healing. mean, it's fixed, but it looks yeah. bad because they got to shave him like a poodle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got like a little, like from here to here, there's no fur because yeah. that's where they put the IV in. But they left it on his yeah. foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks like a poodle. So, uh, yeah, he's got like the poodle haircut with the, f yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's good. It, it was just a nasty-looking scar that he has. That's about it. And he's got a button in there that holds his tendon up. Yeah, it's a tightrope procedure. So they run like a cord through his joint, and that's what holds it in place. Versus other bigger dogs, sometimes they do the T TPLO, where they nail plates onto the bones and connect them that way. This is a little less... Uh, Invasive. I don't know if it's invasive. You still have to go in. You still have to do all it. I think they could do it more. Usually they could do it arthroscopically. And then they, which is better than the PL. And then they, um, the, supposedly the strings that they use are very strong. Stronger oh. than before. Huh. Yeah. I have pictures of it. The, the doctor the gave me. Uh, he gave me pictures of his meniscus. Gotcha. And of the um, CCL. He, they're like uh, microscopic pictures, which we didn't get the first time. Two pages they of don't them. take the wire out though that's in there forever no that right? stays in there that's yeah. his new so now he's got two ligaments so he's well. gonna have two artificial legs basically yeah, so he's a he's six like, million dollar man he's yeah, sixty he's like boston a, <laughs> he's like a uh he's like a robo puppy now he's gonna have two good legs yes better than before he, better than ever. he's being held back by the natural leg <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> all right besides that i mean the week was pretty pretty mellow i don't think we really did it he's yeah, kind of no. been top priority yeah we got to carry him everywhere up and down the stairs yeah we like still do food. but yeah at least now we're carrying with a purpose yeah he's still got his wagon though the wagon's where it's at <laughs> likes his wagon everyone likes the wagon yeah although now we have to take him out of it at dinner because he cries too much wants yeah. food he doesn't like we put it <laughs> the wagon comes up to the table so you can see everything that's on the table and now he's like oh this is what's been up <laughs> here the whole time I'm missing. this is what i've been missing yeah so yeah i mean again it'll be a good recovery a solid recovery i think so, we hope so yep yeah. All right, let's just jump right into the biggest news this week, in my opinion, because there haven't been that much news, which is the big Elon Musk pulling Starlink out of Ukraine if it would load. Oh, I didn't know you so had that. So the reason I wanted to talk about this one is because it kind of makes it, it makes sense as to why. Come on, we could do it. Load, 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 load. Basically, they just launched a few today, right? A few Starlinks up yeah, there today. Yeah, this is a little older, but uh, come on, we could do this, dude. What's wrong with your MacBook? This MacBook's making me angry. Let me try it again. DW, Daily Wire. Come on. Okay, well, whatever. I'll just explain the article because clearly we can't. I'll post it. But um, basically the concept of the article was that uh, Ukraine wanted to use Starlink to do a drone bomb strike on Russia. And Elon didn't feel comfortable... <laughs> Uh, with the idea that his company in Starlink was going to be used for uh, basically destruction in general. So I, it's a fair argument, but I think there's a little more to this story. So if you remember, this is actually not the first time we've heard about this. Mm -hmm. So a couple months ago, they talked about Elon getting rid of Starlink over there as well. But here's why, and I completely agree with him. So 
the Ukrainian government wasn't paying the bill for Starlink. And mm-hmm. for those of you that don't know, Starlink's pretty expensive on a country level. Like, it's billions of dollars to run that thing. It's part of your... I don't know if it falls under military budget or what it falls under. I guess for this, it's military Well, I think budget. he originally offered it to them at without cost involved. That right. was my understanding. And then... It, right. And then the, the problem... Right, they did it before the war. That was, like, like, almost two years ago, right? Yeah. And then... Um, Oh, crap. I'm trying to remember the timeline. So Elon... Fairly right, recently, They thought that said. the war wasn't going to last as long. And yeah. it ended up lasting literally twice as long. So then they had to do the cost of it. And it was a lot of money, to say the least. And right. Starlink, even though it is a big Tesla company, it's not the most successful of the companies financially because there's only so many people that need it right now and right. can afford it. So now that it's gone twice as long, you have to kind of do the math as a company and go, hey, we're losing more money just by giving this to them. Right. right now, this is the other problem. People go, "Oh well, <laughs> well they're using the finances. They're using it. Be- they're not paying their bill mm-hmm. because of the war. Like they can't afford it. They're putting it towards military stuff. Which you just said you're trying to use it for a bomb strike. So I think that falls under military. Mm-hmm. And then you go, "Oh wait, why are you not paying the bill when the U.S. government has given you eighty billion dollars? What's that money going to?" So if that's not a sign that someone's pocketing a lot of this money or that they're using it in places that they shouldn't be, Another that's kind of a big mark. sign, mm-hmm. right? You, so what's the $80 billion going to? Mm-hmm. I would think that if you're using it for a military purpose, the military purpose would be – or the military would pay for your Starlink, right? Because right? that's the money that you were given for, right. for, for anything military to get you through this war. So why are you not paying the bill now when you have the money that we've given you? Right. So that, to me, is a big wake-up call to, I would say, Americans. But it's funny. They spin it so that Elon's the bad guy in this. Yeah, and I think in recent, to your point at the beginning, it was going to be, oh, a fairly quick offensive, and it'll be decided, you know, bing, bang, boom. So they were saying, but many others were saying, no, this has got to drag on for years and years and years. years. And I think as people like Mr. Musk came into it and he's giving away something for free when other companies are profiting off of this, you know, I think he had to have a cutoff and say enough is enough. Yeah, like people think that it's not like a normal internet bill, (laughs) right, with the Starlink. It's cheaper because you're doing it on a country wide, so it's cheaper per person, but the country has to pay for it. And they're saying we're not going to pay it because we're in war. And Elon said that's all right for the first year, I guess get you thinking that the war wasn't going to last as long and then all of a sudden uh two years go by and he's like okay we just lost billions of dollars it's not a successful company yet because mm-hmm. it's a pretty new company mm-hmm. uh that we own i'm not you can't allocate funds from tesla to make up for it that's not how it works mm-hmm. so someone has to pay the bill eventually they have the money now they were given 80 billion plus dollars from us uh they should be using it for that budget well it might also be an attempt i don't know to draw attention to the fact that why am i not getting paid we're giving you american citizens are giving you all these tax yeah. dollars to fund this ridiculous amounts and of money. maybe you know it was not his intention to ever bill them for it but it kind of highlights yet another you have all this money where is it going like right. you're saying and this is an, a way of drawing attention to the fact that questions need to be answered why can't you pay for starlink but they're using where is so, the money yeah. going it, it it it, it it probably came down to hey we're losing a lot of money to the point where Starlink's hurting. We need someone to pay a bill for something. You guys have eighty billion that was just given to you mm-hmm. by the U.S. government, and you're going to be getting more because we're going to have to do no, infrastructure stuff later. Eighty billion is yeah. nothing compared yeah. to the other. Like million. Uh, uh, remember we listened to the Rogan uh, yep. Mike Baker podcast, and he said the one thing that we're like eighty billion is nothing in comparison to the re infrastructure. Oh yeah, we're gonna have Price. we're going to yeah. pay to rebuild Ukraine before we ever rebuild all the cities that are being destroyed, destroyed like San Francisco yeah. and Chicago and New York City. He said, I, and remember, he's FBI, so he's seen like what it looks like when a country gets bombed out and they have to rebuild. Yeah, he said if we, if we hit two hundred billion dollars, he he would say he'd be surprised because that money was pretty low. He said it's going to be at least two hundred billion dollars just for re for. Excuse me, infrastructure costs yeah. to rebuild that city. Well, we spent the a fortune rebuilding long. Japan after World War II. Yeah. While our cities literally decayed, like Detroit yeah. and whatnot during those years, and built it into yet a gorgeous city, right? right? Better than some of our cities. And our infrastructure is crumbling, our airports and whatnot. We'll go in and we'll put in beautiful, wonderful things in Ukraine. Yeah. 
Hopefully we get a piece of it. <laughs> and you do know, Dad reminded me last night we were talking about this. Chernobyl was in Ukraine. Isn't it like off the top of it, though? Yeah, but it was yeah. part of the Ukraine territory, yeah. the Chernobyl. So, uh, yeah, good luck sending soldiers over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only are you going to die, it's going to be painful while you're doing it. Yeah. yeah. You glow in the dark. But for people. it bothers me that they're painting Elon to be the bad guy here when in reality, again, they just have – he's a company. If your company's sinking, you got to do something about it. No offense, but – the company's kind of more important well, than you think. Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with his on-the-surface comments. And, yeah. you know, could there be other influences on him? Sure. We can't be naive. It's, you know, he's he's a power player yeah, on the a, world stage. Uh, yeah, and, and others. But, yeah, so there could be – he may have some interests that he can influence with his – with his business, but that's no different than any other defense contractor out there or and what they do or government <laughs> and what they do. There was some comment, a recent thing. I think he shut Starlink down and his comment was, I did it because the Russians were, if they continued, the Russians would have rele released nuclear weapons and I refused to allow that to happen. So right. he was painting his recent action as I had to do it for moral reasons because I just didn't think it was right. Right. Now, fast forward, I think he's saying going forward, he wants to get paid. You know, if you're going to yeah, use the system. Yeah, if you're going to use it and you're going to use it to do certain things. like Because you can't cater to one side and say, you get this for free. And then when they do a bomb strike, it's like, oh, well, this isn't what I wanted you to use it for. Well, he, right, it was used for information. But Starlink's kind of interesting because since it's satellite, it's not just – internet it's also gps systems well that's my question how do who uses it now and how how do they pay for it so it's is like a gps the, service yeah so it's a it's not the strong like it's not used for gaming it's used for just getting a mass amount of people basic internet yeah but because it's satellite it has all the capabilities of satellite like all gps is, is right. just satellites right so they want to use it for first you can connect to it so the satellites in the sky and then basically send but it who you and me through iphones like apple would use yeah. it for the or the att would use it for their wi-fi customers yeah or he's they trying tap to make into his it? own like he wants uh, to oh, okay. have like so no one has to pay an at&t or verizon bill you just pay starlink oh and uh that way it's government funded so it's cheaper for the government so in consideration mm. it's cheaper and ideally we would just pay whatever the government needs i forget the layout of it but like if the government pays four billion for it mm -hmm. right we that's just where tax dollars would go to yeah i don't really understand the like at and i don't really think they have they own satellites up there for the phone service i think no they because use all their wi-fi servers server based through antennas and stuff okay so yeah. they're antenna based his is the first so... one that's real satellite internet because okay. we, we've never had the technology to really Bandwidth all the way down, like. But that, what about GPS people. services? Those GPS must be through satellites. From the internet, though, right, but that's, that's an old Starlink. That's other companies doing GPS. Right. So he has the sat. That's the question. I've never looked into it, but I don't know if Starlink is all his. Like in the sense of he's got the satellites up there, he's got the chips, he's got that, or if he just uses satellites that are already there and then he does a deal with those people. Well, he just launched a bunch of them. Yeah. So then. But, um, but does it mean launch as in, oh, we launched a new product? Or does it mean launched as in we literally sent something to space? SpaceX's, in, SpaceX's internet mega constellation, which currently consists of more than 4,600 operational satellites. God, isn't it wild that there's that many satellites out there? I didn't uh, realize that there's that many satellites. This was the 63rd launch for SpaceX. Yeah. They did 61 launches, so I'm just trying to find a number for you. 22 Starlink satellites are scheduled to deploy from the Falcon 9's upper stage about 65 minutes after launch. So 22 new ones just went up? I have to assume they're not that big then. Because I, I wonder what the definition of a satellite is. Is it just anything that's up in the air that we own? You can probably Google it and find out. But you have to talk to the mic more. This was a 63rd month. mission. Oh, it's just a 63rd mission. Well, if I skip too close, it's right in my face. If I don't, I no, can't put that can't. in front of me. Oh, you can't? Well, no, I can't. Well, I can't, but then I can't see too much, but <laughs> whatever. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's quite interesting as to how it works. I do think it is kind of the future in the sense of we are all going to have uh, satellite at some point, like satellite internet. Now it's more so focusing on getting the actual bandwidth up. And like not affecting others. So let's say I did want to do gaming and I was downloading like a hundred gigabytes a day. 
there's nothing that makes it so that the person next door isn't mm-hmm. taking a bandwidth hit just yet. Yeah. Because, again, you're literally just hitting so Everything's many people going, at once, yeah, which is umbrella. great, but, yeah. So Umbrella type of that's, thing. But as we were saying before, I know we kind of got off topic. Topic. Um, you could also use it for the GPS systems because it is a satellite. Mm-hmm. So that's what the Ukrainians want to use it for. Kind of makes you what happens someday when Elon Musk is no longer around. Depends on who takes it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's kind of a scary thought that all these satellites out there, in one sense it's scary that one person controls it, but at least you can kind of monitor what one person or one company is doing. What happens when he's no longer around and all these satellites are floating up there? I bet you there? some government entity, may, probably our own, is going to just buy out Tesla. Yeah. They're going to try because well, they want the technology. And we're learning that's not a good thing. Yeah, very so quickly. So what do you do with yeah company monopoly but also you could make the country. argument that our government because we've seen now with all the ufo stuff that our government has something that's way better than whatever tesla made one would like to think yeah. i don't know but so they don't even care about it mm. in the sense of yeah we could do that we just it's not part of our they'd probably buy out the product but they're like oh this is nothing well somebody's going to take it over or we may get to depending on how long mr musk lives and runs the company we get to the point where everybody there'll be thousands and thousands of these things floating around the atmosphere. I wonder if Tesla has a project going on right them. now for like how can we preserve this guy's brain like after he's dead, like that kind of. I don't stuff. know. Could you fix? I could bet. you fix the driverless cars because they're screwed up? <laughs> Let's start with the, the basics. Yeah, we're we're working on that. Come on. Hey, Bill Gates, stop picking the lights off a kid's hair and fix my Windows Ten. <laughs> Let's yeah. go back to the basics with some of these mega. Billionaires. Yeah, you look over the <laughs> you look over the basics. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Good, 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 good. I saw a video. I saw a video the other day of the uh, Tesla. One of the Teslas failed to stop for someone crossing the street. Oh, jeez. But it would. <laughs> it was a black man and his black son, and I guess the screen couldn't tell the difference between the street and them. Oh no! Oh, jeez. <laughs> so it knew that something was in front, but they couldn't see what it was. So it thought to go around, but it didn't. So like there, I don't know if it was a oh skin tone thing, but yeah. So now, Tesla, raceless Tesla. And raceless Tesla, <laughs> racist. Tesla. Elon Musk is racist. Yeah. So, and they'll, they were They'll accuse all... him of building that into the car. Yeah. You know, that's how they are. Right? But uh, yeah, I saw that. I think that was yesterday or two days ago. But uh, yeah, it failed to stop properly. So they were like, whoa, we got to fix this. Yeah, I wouldn't trust any driver. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> we will get there eventually, but I, I don't know if. I, right now is not the time. Oh, Even but, George Jetson drove his own spaceship to work every morning. <laughs> oh, God. Bringing in those. So that's really the only, like, political one that I had. I don't know where we want to go from there. We could do uh, – what do we want? Well, I, I couldn't even think of an order. Usually I put these in order beforehand. But we could do – let's get that dark one over with. This this one that I saw. No okay. human remains found after claims here's of your, mass graves in Canada. Here's your segue. Detecting human life, whether it's crossing the street or at one time it's under the ground. Okay. So uh, there's been, back in 2021, I want to say it was, and even before then. Let's see. What used to happen was, say in the 1800s, as the poor Native Americans in North America, not just the United States, because this is Canada we're talking about, they decided as we were conquering and taking over their lands that they were heathens and they need to be Christianized. Okay. So they took many of the children away from Native American parents and put them in these residential schools. Mm -hmm. And the thought process was they can't speak their language, they can't practice their religion, they have to learn about Christianity, they have to dress in uniform. So they were just trying to um, get the, socialize them into the Western culture. And there is evidence that they were brutal in doing it, very abusive. Mm-hmm. But that was true of a lot of kids who went to Catholic schools right. in the 1800s. And other schools, too, not just Catholic, Christian and Catholic. So this article talks about back in 2021, I want to say it, it says was. May of 2021, the right. leaders. The British Columbia First Nation Bank, and there's a name for them. I can't pronounce it. They discovered that um, in the ground there are these anomalies around some of these resen- residential places. They use radar. Mm-hmm. And they... Th- said it was human remains, mass graves of all these missing Native American children that were forced into these schools, taken from their parents, died, and there's their, their deaths are undocumented and they can't find them. So they started this whole campaign. And, of course, Justin Trudeau got on the bandwagon. They started giving all this money um, to uh, groups to try and, 
you know, help the families who are victims of this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, there's roughly 150,000 children that attended these schools, which I thought was a huge number. Wow. And went from the 1880s all the way through to the end of the 20th century. Members of the academic community, so some historians who were following the story in Canada, even they started to have their doubts. They didn't say that the schools didn't exist. I'm they a little did. confused by what they're doubting. What are they doubting? That they're mass graves. Mass graves. Okay, right. Gotcha. So these radar detectors are detecting some anomaly under the earth around these schools. And okay. naturally, those who believe that these children who are undocumented deaths and they were murdered are saying, those are the bodies of these kids. And that hysteria of them claiming those anomalies are these mass graves around these schools that kicked off a whole government initiative to help the poor people who were victims of it, their families, uh, and a whole negative campaign towards, obviously, Catholic, ch Catholic schools and whatnot right. from that time period. Lawsuits, the whole nine yards. Even the Pope apologized for it for what happened. But then. now we're wondering if the bodies were even real. Okay, gotcha. so now we've done some excavating. There are no human remains. Right. I don't know. They, they don't go into this article what those actual anomalies were. I'm not even sure they know. But, you know, if you even question it, as some of these historians said, yeah, we know stuff happened, but we don't believe that, you know, it may not have been as, as brutal as mass murders that went on, and there's no evidence of that. And now after doing this, you know, they got called genocide deniers. We always have to have a name for everybody who goes against the initiative. And sure enough, that, oh, that statues of the individual in Canada so, who founded these residential schools. So they, so hold on, so they dug up. So they were told dig this, these up. People did money this. was given. Yeah, to, to dig, dig it, it up. up, and then they found nothing, and people were still like, "Where's the bodies? They're yeah. somewhere." Well, so this might have been going... going on before they actually did the recent oh, okay. excavation. This was during the time, I think, when all the rioting was going on around here. I don't remember what year that was. There's a picture of one of the schools. So all, those are all little Native American children that were forced into a, like a Christian, um, 1937, I believe that says, yep. forced into a Christian. You know, they had to deny. It's totally wrong. I mean, we know by today's standards. Oh, yeah. At that time, though, that's what they understood. They thought they were helping these poor kids. So what was killing them? The priests and the nuns and oh, the, the really? teachers at the schools, they were being beaten, that's brutalized. The, the, yeah, that the goal, some gotcha. were saying, well, the whole point was to get rid of the Native American population. Because remember, these are the oh, children. I get it. Okay, now right. it's all coming together for me. Right. So oh, that's I, why they're saying there's coffee, all these mass so graves. and slow. I won't lie to you. They did the excavation, and sure enough, there was no... Now, does that mean it didn't happen? Were children not murdered? Oh, I'm sure it happened. Possibly. 150,000? Well, that's the total number of children right. that attended so the schools. How many, they didn't how many are we talking? They don't, they don't have a number, right? No, but when you say mass murder, you're you're Thinking making it sound like it was like a 20, 30? Like concentration type kind of yeah. institutional right, murder what you're that these it sound kids like. are being when you throw out a, killed. When you throw out a number of 150,000, you hear mass murder, your brain instantly starts crunching numbers. Right, when right. In reality, but it could I didn't be even five. Know, right, I didn't even know there were that many children that were put in. I sadly, I thought more Indian Native Americans were slaughtered by our military when we were pushing out west that there would be that many young children to go into these schools. But this is mostly in Canada. Um, I'm pretty sure we had some of those residential schools in the U.S., but I've never heard of any like mass ma right. mass grave murder situations here. Maybe that's because, you know, we haven't gotten the hoopla that they did up there. But I just thought that was a very interesting story. It is interesting. In the sense that it's a tragedy what happened to them, but it's one of those, you know, it's the crucible all over again. You... you the hoaxes and the witch hunts, you, you start hysteria, and they started hysteria with no proof to back it up. Yeah, I, again, I hope they find those bodies, but at the same time, it's like, wait, if they're not there, <laughs> right? It was just a story they're passed They're buried down. somewhere. It, I mean, all these children from 1937 Well, well how do you know that? Because they well, said that they don't they, have any records. Right. Well, you have no right. no idea where they've been For buried. Well, you know, that's just something that the Native Americans made up to make the white man look bad during those times. Possibly, but yeah. where did all these children go? Some were released they from the away. facility, but I don't mm. think they documented too much stuff. Yeah, probably because they didn't want to have to account for every child, because I'm sure many of them did die yeah. under suspicious circumstances. Well, was it massive? I don't know. Well, something must have killed them, and maybe... 
It was the Palky One Chip Challenge. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's, that's, that's pathetic. <laughs> Transition. So you brought this up at dinner. So the One Chip Challenge that Mike and I did over here. Eh. Boom. Yeah. Maybe I'll post in Michael on the floor. If, I, <laughs> if I knew this then, I wouldn't have allowed it with well, my little, my want. baby's delicate constitution. <laughs> Michael's got stomach problems. Uh, so the Packy One Chip does, Challenge really pulled does. from store shelves in light of teen fatality. So I read this article. Now, yeah. so many people have done this chip challenge. It kind of bothers me that one person has a fatality, which, again, is horrible. But the whole chip's starting to get pulled. So for those of you that don't know, the first of the month, a 14-year-old, um, Harris Wolaba, was hospitalized after using losing consciousness in his home. Now... Again, he just lost consciousness. Yeah. Don't know if that has anything to do with a chip. Could be an allergic reaction. There's a couple things going on. But I would think if you're doing a one chip challenge, you'd have, like, are you doing it on camera? You're not doing it for fun. So someone's got to be around you, right? You never know. Some of these kids might be doing it just to see if they could do it. Right. Practicing before they go in front of other maybe, kids and embarrass maybe, themselves. Maybe, but. Following the tragic death, uh, Paki has now voluntarily removed his product from the store shelves. This comes after what the company claimed as an increase in teen usage of the product. This is actually kind of a fair point. So the One Chip Challenge became popular because of TikTok. Everyone started doing it. Mm -hmm. And obviously there's a lot of kids on TikTok. But again, think of the tens of thousands of people that have done it now. Yeah. You have one death and now the whole thing gets shut down. I don't understand. Like... That, and, and we're still not 100% sure if the chip is what killed him. They're doing an autopsy, I saw. But I, I it more so, again, it's horrible that this kid died. And kids are dropping dead from some vaccine. and nobody That's a very good point. <laughs> she said it, not me. Yeah. But God forbid you eat that chip. That's Don't have that chip. That's a very good point. But again, uh, not to I, make a joke yeah, of this I feel bad, death, yeah. but still, I mean, if we we're, we're jumping to the conclusion that it was the chip and maybe it was, right. but you know, again, we're, we're already you, you set to pull really it over for the one family, poor death. But, yeah. yeah. It sucks to lose a 14 year old, but that's why it's, I would just be very surprising to me if the chip is what caused it, unless they had an allergic reaction that just closes the boat. Well, and they're saying for, for, for young people. Okay. He looks, I can't, they didn't give his size. I don't think, but. He looks bigger than I am, and I'm an adult, so it's okay for me to have it. My body can handle it, but his couldn't. Yeah, I think there's but more also to there's, it. Physiologically but also there's speaking, there's more teenagers that have done it than adults at this point. No, but they've only pulled it for teenagers, right? They don't want teenagers using it, but they're yeah. leaving it for adults. Well, they're just taking it off the shelves in general. Well, I guess you know only adults could buy it then, so the liability for yeah, the company yes, goes maybe. away. But having said that, if they're just basing physiologically on, well, it bothers teens, but it doesn't bother. Well, what about his, you know, yeah. growth I mean, compared to other people? I didn't people. think it was that bad. There's never really a point where I was like, oh, man, this could be this could be catastrophic. But the next day. Well, I was concerned about Mike for a little while Mike there, was, because Mike he was, was in bad. a bad shape. And I'm like, what the hell? Now I got to go to the emergency room and explain that my son had a chip and have all these doctors look at me like, what are you, yeah. an asshole? So for those, <laughs> of, you, yeah. for chip. those of you that... <laughs> Don't know. Mike and I did the challenge a couple months ago. I don't know what episode that was, but Mike played it cool the whole podcast. Literally, the second we ended the podcast, it was a shit show for about two hours. Yeah. Mike was, I don't even know what was going on that bathroom, yeah. but he was throwing up. He was, he was, he was like the Antichrist in that bathroom yeah. coming yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> it was the like exorcist <laughs> noises we were hearing. So, uh, I, that, but I thought that would be the worst of it. Again, maybe stomach ache, but. It's not – again, it bothers me when one person – something something bad happens to one person, so the whole thing gets shut down. And again, not making light of this boy's death. Yeah. But until I know for a fact that it was the chip that did it and not underlying conditions of maybe he was already allergic to something that was on the – it gives you the ingredients, so you should know. Or, I mean, you would have been hit by, by, by now. Well, logic would dictate that if other kids have had it right. and didn't die – what about this particular Was he on person? medication beforehand, too, for something else? Right. and Or maybe who would know if you're allergic to an extremely hot pepper if you've never had one right. in your life? Um, and maybe it's a combination of things. I don't know. Maybe he was vaxxed and had the chip. I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> but point is. Demonetized. Yeah. Point is, you can block that out. I just, uh, 
I don't want to see it happen to other people because it was kind of nasty the way Mike was after that. Yeah. I don't know if he but, was again, I thought that clearly was the going to help him. Because well, I think of all the people that get through it fine, yeah. which is, again, literally tens of thousands of people. It sucks, but yeah. you don't die. Well, I couldn't imagine somebody doing that if they have an ulcer and don't know it. Exactly. Well, they even say, though, uh, it says the product label clearly states it. It is not for children or anyone sensitive to spicy foods, Michael, or has food allergies, is pregnant, or has underlying health conditions. But if a 14-year-old is not going to know that. They don't know if they have an ulcer, right. if it's a small one. Yeah, they get stomach what... aches every once in a while. They just think it's because of the SATs. That's true. That's true. Yeah, so that's they true. just don't really, you know, more people may have that but situation and not even know it. If something was to do that kind of damage to you, it wouldn't be sold as a food. Right, there's still certain approvals that have to well, be done. Well, after this, you're going to see now they're going to have to like now they're limiting it to adults because there's liability involved. What yeah. is this thing? How bad is it? And should it just be given to anybody? Yeah, that's a fair point, I guess. The Amazon, like we got ours off Amazon. I didn't even know they had it in stores. To be honest, I don't yeah, I've never seen it in it. a store, but yeah, it's a pretty distinct. Uh, they don't box. have it at the shop, right? <laughs> yeah, they don't have it at have shop it and shop, save. Right, yeah, you know? but. Shout out to the family. Hopefully yeah. they get through it. But That's a terrible way to lose your kid. Yeah. Not that they're um, a good way, but. I don't know how to transition to this one properly, yeah. but you did this one. No yes. fun allowed. Call of Duty turns AI to drive toxicity out of the voice chat. You Watch what you one? say when you're playing Modern Warfare. <laughs> Modern Warfare 2. 3 comes out next month. They're, they're going to test it with the Modern Warfare 3. Now they're going to run an AI. Call of Duty. Yep. They're going to run an AI to look for any toxic comments amongst the group chats. Well, I just want to point out, Matt Sprague has probably paid over $5,000 just in League of Legends accounts because he gets banned every other week for shit he says. You can't even say the R word anymore. You can't call a kid a re... And he gets banned for it or (laughs) Oh, yeah, Matt's gone through so many accounts. Matt has lost accounts that are like two grand just in skins, just gone, evaporated. So... they have him on a shit list there. I guarantee you. <laughs> at Riot Games. He's on the wanted list. Yeah, he's on the wanted list. Faces they see where there. the IP address is. His, and his like, avatar is up there. Him. Matt has gone through. I'd have to ask. I'll ask him tonight during the fights how many accounts. He'll go hundreds. <laughs> Activision Blizzard plans to use the AI tool monitor for verbal chats of players in real time and censor any bad speech. They're partnering with the AI, AI outfit Modulate to integrate. It's called... Toxmod. Another company. Toxmod tool. Honestly, I'm sick of these AI companies. There's too many now, but go ahead. It's Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and Warfare 3 they're going to put it into. Not Warfare 3, yes. Yeah, so. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this kind of killed. There's a funny saying that we have in the gaming community, how nowadays no kids would be able to survive a Mon Warfare 2 lobby because back in the day, that came out probably 2012, I would say, maybe. No. Uh, Maybe 2012, but I mean those lobbies. I mean, you, if that's where you learn what the N word means, <laughs> you know, those are oh, pretty yeah, wild. That's that's... That, that's the old days. But this, I think everyone hates this more than anything because this isn't like a freedom of speech thing. Again, when you start screwing with the gamers, we rise yeah. up. They're taking it too far now. They're taking it too okay. far. Because you can no imprison presidents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can throw yeah. away you government do, leaders, yeah. but you do not take on <laughs> the kids not. of modern no warfare, Call allowed, of Duty. Yeah. So they they've, tr- the they've tried this before in other games, like as I told you, League of Legends. There was a point in time, huh? <laughs> League of Legends had a voice chat where you can literally talk to your teammates. Yeah, it was such a shit show. <laughs> in like three months, they took it out. <laughs> That's how bad it was. And Matt Sprague was number one. <laughs> so there, there's. But here's my question: <laughs> What right do they have? To monitor that. Well, it's not their name that's being disparaged, or is there some sort of liability? I'll tell you what it is. On their part, it has to do with money. Because look at it this way: all the Call of Duties are rated M for mature. Yeah. So technically speaking, you are not supposed to be playing that game unless you're seventeen or older, or your parents consent, whatever. Right. Right. I don't know why we even have those anymore. Like, there's really no point because kids are the only reason they're doing this is because of kids. That's really it. So you're having kids play a game that they're not even old enough to well, technically be playing. On the flip side of that, no. that's why you do it. Because legally, for somebody who says, I don't like the language on there for my kid. Liability. Your kid's yeah. not even supposed to be yeah, on exactly. it. So but they don't have to change it. Now they're it. catering to the kids because they make so much money on these games now. That's what I'm saying. You would never have a turn off toxicity for 18-year-olds. 
right? Uh, I disagree. I think you that's think so. Oh, I think so because they want to scrub all speech. And you watch it won't the toxicity. Watch how it changes. You, oh, you it will. Listen. It'll get worse. No, no, I'm not saying you don't that. fuck with the gamers, mom. No, it it won't be that kind of talk. People the interesting are. thing will be if the if the AI um, polices the N word, and it happens to be black person using it. Yeah, I I don't know how that works because. They do have something like that in Call of Duty already, mm -hmm. but no one like it, it's never. There's never been a time where you actually get banned for it. Well, now apparently they're going to scrub for things. Right. I'm assuming that's what they mean. One of the things for toxicity. But it always happens until they get backlash. So Discord well, that's, was going to do the same thing. This is my thing. question. If you do that to a white person, okay, fine. If you tell a black individual that you can't use the N word, as we've experienced in other media, you can't do that. They're yeah. allowed to say it, and you get labeled racist. So I think, once again, they're going to wind up causing so much headache for themselves Yeah. if they just left it alone. Exactly. I do think, I will say there are some times where my definition of toxicity in video games usually isn't that. It's the kids that will have their headset on and blast music through it. That's more annoying than anything to me. To me, that's a different level, and I know that's such a petty complaint, mm -hmm. but but I go back it, it to why me. do they care? What difference does it make to Call of well, Duty? You bought the game, you're using the game again because kids are now able to play them because their parents are like, yeah, sure, just get the new right. Call that's of Duty. not their problem. They have a but, rating on right. it. A, a tr true, but they don't care about that anymore because they make so much money off the copies. They they're just going to cater to the kids now. Call of Duty has Call of Duty has become a kid game. Right, but why do they have to change it? Kids are you, kids are playing the game already. Parents are letting yeah. them buy it. They're doing well with it. What do they hope to achieve by saying, "All right, we're going to water it down and keep the language my fine for little kids"? That, I mean, well, I think this would be my thoughts on what probably happens. Kids are playing on their consoles, mm -hmm. like they're, and they'll play it through their TV. Yeah, and then the parents are hearing it in the background, right. and they go, "What that? Why is my kid getting called the N word at four years old?" Right, right. Which happens. I mean, that is Call of Duty and a lot of other games. So I always wonder if they get a crap ton of calls from these parents that are like, why am I hearing this on this game that I bought? Right, Thinking that it's the game's fault. Right, and they're not admitting it's a four-year-old playing it. They're saying, well, I'm playing it and I don't want to hear it. So yeah. it's policing of adults by yeah. other adults, and it's not right. Exactly. So, again, I, I'm under the mindset of... And I think most gamers would agree, just don't touch our video games. It's like the one thing we have away from the real world, <laughs> right? So Kind of like is, how I feel about free speech, but yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So uh, is, I, I don't think this will last. I think they're going to try it. It's going to fail because no kid's going to want to do it. You'll, you'll kill your game before you kill anything else. Well, I, like I said, it's like everything else. They're going to try and police something that they can't do a blanket policing. They can't just say no one can use the N-word. Which makes sense to you and me, and I'm fine with that ruling. But you're going to have somebody use the N-word, and they're going to get in trouble for it, and it's going to turn out to be somebody who's going to claim that's racist, and they will take Call of Duty to court, and then it's going to become something ridiculous, like only certain so. people could do, which is asinine. This is how we go with this free speech and hate speech crap. Yeah, which is annoying because you don't know. Uh, the, the only argument is the anim, anonym, anonymity of the people. So you don't know as a player who I am if I am of allowed well, to say that word until you know? they scrub somebody and they right. let their identity be known and say how dare you tell me I can't use that word you're racist for telling me that right. I'm allowed to use it's it a, it's a problem so I would just right. but then they say well then but then it gets to the point of okay we're just not going to have voice chat anymore which is what League of Legends does and League of Legends is probably the only exception yeah well but uh, yeah it's it's a tough one I don't know most people most people use discord nowadays anyway so true, yeah. and that nobody's to talk on to that. your friends. Yeah, but until they figure out, and they'll start scrubbing Discord next. So they tried you know. to do that. They tried to do that yeah. last year, and <laughs> gamers were like, "No, you're not doing that." Right. Well, <laughs> they're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th that's what I'm we saying. Why are they than bothering? The I, I don't that's, understand yeah. why they're bothering yeah. because, you know. Well, okay. Well, parents are Blizzard, not going to buy this. Blizzard's stuff. a problem to begin mm, with. Blizzard's true. just having L after L for the last three years. So uh, yeah, I don't know. They're they're. Or they're trying to turn it into a child-friendly game. Fine, but then adults aren't going to buy it. Well, if that's it's too watered no, down, this is where Call it. of Duty is a little different because it's so big. People buy Call of Duty just because it's Call of Duty. Yeah, like there's no, 
There's should, kids that only play that game, so it doesn't matter. Wait, which I go back to. Yeah. A parent calls me and is complaining because of the language. If I own the company, I'll say it's an NC-17. Yeah. The language is allowed. If people yeah. want to say it, they can say it. Don't to have which, your four-year-old if, playing Call of Duty. Well, it, then they're going to have to admit that it's a four-year-old. But you want to know what's more it. annoying? Here's the other part. You could just go into settings and turn it off. Right. right. <laughs> so instead of just turning off voice chat because you right. can't handle it, yeah, we have to have this. Right. Yeah. Well, this is another example of the censorship. You know, one person doesn't like what the other people are saying. Yeah. Therefore, the masses but have again, to stop saying it. The difference it. between you guys is it's like the average person, you have a right and a left. When it comes to gamers, we're all on board. All on board. There's no sides in gaming. Yeah. We either win or we don't. Listen. And trust me, we're going to win. Free speech, in my opinion, is across the board, including in the gaming community. You can exactly. say whatever you want to. But I'm somebody who doesn't believe in hate speech. Not that I don't think people do hate speech, but who polices it? Who defines what that is? So speaking of games, just because I, I wanted to do this one at the end, but now they're having the game of the year debate because okay. we're getting towards the end of the year. So we got four. You really liked Hogwarts. Yeah. So we got four. That. Four games in the running, really, mm -hmm. for game of the year. We have Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. Baldur's Gate 3. Uh... Starfield, and then The Legend of Zelda game that came out back in February. Yeah. So, uh, truth be told, I think it's too early to tell. We got a bunch of games coming out in the next two, three weeks, actually, that might change this. Okay. But what I want to talk about was Starfield because we played it the other day. This is Bethesda's big game, and everyone wanted my thoughts on it. Okay. Now, right now, there's a lot of – one of the biggest talks in the gaming industry is, like, gaming communities right now, Mom. Mm-hmm. All the big streamers, some are pro, some are against the new game mm -hmm. of Starfield. I'm not saying – I'm, I'm going to take the neutral ground here. I'm going to be that guy that takes the neutral ground. It's not a bad game. It's just – it's almost too big for me. Okay. And what I mean by that is, I mean, Mom, there's thousands of planets. To visit. <laughs> I'm not, and oh, you the, told me about yeah, that. I was yeah, like, dear Starfield. God, everything's just – I've never played a game that's so big yet so empty, but it's made to be empty, right? It's a post-apocalyptic world, uh, so you go yeah. to Earth and there's nothing there, oh, right? Okay. It's just rubble. Okay, it's, great. <laughs> yeah, but also the combat the felt show. old. <laughs> yeah, story-wise, the story is, was really interesting, but we played it on stream for about two hours. Mm -hmm. It was probably the most boring two hours of my life. I'll give you that. And then I looked at the comments. I was like, how long? I played for another like six hours total afterwards, and I still felt the same. Yeah. I felt like I was just running back and forth. And then someone in the comments of someone's video was like, it gets good after the 12th hour. I was oh, like, my God. Oh, we're uninstalling this one. Yeah, 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was – yeah, some people have a lot of hours and they say it gets better. Also, the beauty of Bethesda games is you can mod them. So people say that the modding's much better. I just felt like it was a little too much work in a game where I don't have that kind yeah, of time. You got to mod it into something interesting. Yeah, and then also <laughs> like you have to fly. So you you have so to get from planet to planet, right? You fly. Yeah. Once you get there, there's like a combat mission that you can do or you could bypass it. You don't have to do the mission. So in the end, all you're doing is just traveling from, from place to place. place. That's it. So Boring. Yeah. For someone that has unlimited time, like if you're getting paid as a streamer to play these games, maybe you'll like it. But for me, it was just way too much. So when I started playing was a game called uh, The Outer Worlds, which came out a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. They did a game with Bethesda a long time ago. And I thought that... Um, I thought it was a Bethesda game. I forgot that it's not made by Bethesda. Just as good. So if you, if there's anyone out there that wants a game that's like Starfield but on a smaller scale, go grab The Outer Worlds. It's on uh, the Games Pass right now. By the way, if that's supposed to be Harry Potter, no, they're that's, way uh, off. Way ha off. Harry Potter's not in Hogwarts Legacy, Mom. Oh, Remember, it's okay. way after. Oh, okay. Right. I didn't know that. Didn't know that. Let me tell you how many years have passed, Mother. Oh, jeez. So one of the <laughs> – the only this is how I know to gauge the time. Because when I played it, I expected Harry to be in it. If it's not at Universal, it's not, not real. Yeah, it's not real. Exactly. <laughs> but so one of the – your teacher, who's super old, is Ron Weasley's granddaughter or daughter. Yeah. Oh. So at least a century has gone by since Harry's yeah, been Yeah, okay. Yeah. Two generations Yeah, two generations. Okay. So it's like, oof. But okay. yeah, so either way, Harry, now Harry Potter – the only reason Harry Potter is in there is because I will say it is by far the best Harry Potter game we've had. But if you're not a Harry Potter fan, it's just an okay game with very good graphics. Oh. And, like, it's a one-to-one -one scale replica of the world, which is really cool. 
No, he's pretty realistic looking. That yeah, well, you got to see Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate's insane. Mm-hmm. But Baldur's Gate, this one, I so I actually played this two years ago in a beta. I was offered to play the beta for it and uh, or like a really early access. And it was good, but they've made so many changes to it. I was like, oh, I'm not going to touch this one now. But from what I've seen, so it's all based on, uh, it's Dungeons and Dragons, essentially. Yeah. So it's based on rolling for chances and whatever. Mm-hmm. It's a long game. So many people are. Like, I think that one has a better chance of winning game of the year than the other two. The other one's the Zelda one. Yeah. Which that one's only big because it's the only Nintendo game out there. Right. right. So anyone who has a Switch is going to vote for that one. Well, and the Dungeons and Dragons yeah. is a good segue for that generation <clears throat> for kids that played it in the 80s that yeah. are now doing gaming. And I don't know. I think we've talked about this, but I have no idea how to play Dungeons and Dragons. Like the real Dungeons yeah, and Dragons. Yeah, I've never. I, I know. I. Was, I Uncle I was a nerd, once. but I wasn't that kind of a nerd. <laughs> Apparently, Uncle played it once. I asked I him, and I was like, I, I was like, Uncle, well, how was it? He was like, it's a whole new world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd have to ask him about it again because he never gave me the details. But I don't remember him playing <clears throat> ever playing that. I think he said he played it in college once. Oh, gosh. And he was like, it's a whole new experience. They called me the Grandmaster. <laughs> kind of nerd fest. He played there's football whole, in college. I can't whole... believe he had a nerd fest going yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, he played football. <laughs> football and D&D. Uh, there's actually a podcast, I believe. I'm probably getting this wrong. And this is one of those things where in the comments, someone's going to say something. There's a podcast where they only play Dungeons and Dragons. So mm-hmm. it's a podcast of the board game. Some of those games are days long, sometimes weeks. Yeah, I do know that because I remember, oh, Stranger Things. I think they have that in Stranger Things, that series from the right. 80s, where they take the game to each kid's house and they play it, continue the playing of it. But I, that was, I don't know, that was kind of, I think that was a little bit after my time and starting to move, like I was moving out of the board game mm. age. So a lot of my friends weren't really into that. Maybe the guys played <clears throat> it more, but. Yeah. I think Baldur's Gate 3 has a good chance. The only other one that I don't think Lies Appeal win. So what about I'm Diablo trying- 4? No, Diablo 4 tanked. That oh. game's going to lose 100%. There, there's no chance that Diablo 4 is going to make it as game of the year. I'd be surprised if it even gets nominated at this point. If it does, then we know Blizzard's doing some tomfoolery. Oh, but right. that's a game that it, it literally, they just declared it was a flop last week or something. Oh, because it, it's in that list. <clears throat> it went from like 100, no, more than that, like a million concurrent viewers or something. Like close to that. I, I want to say like 800,000. And then it just went down to like... Oh. 6,000. Oops. It there goes a lot of money down oh, the drain. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Any, like, if they announced Diablo 5 tomorrow, I don't think anyone would get it. <laughs> Truthfully. Oops. Yeah, they really effed up that one. That stinks. So, yeah. So, I think Game of the Year is probably going to be uh, Legend of Zelda, unfortunately. Okay. But uh, Baldur's Gate's definitely in there. I haven't played because it. Because it's woke. It's a female. No, it's not. I don't know. Make it up. Oh. Zelda is a female name. Do you know, Well, oh, man. This is where my Mom, what's the main character's name in Zelda? Zelda. No, God. <laughs> no, Link is the main character, Mom. Zelda's right, right, the right, princess. Right. Hey, it took me how long to learn Luffy, Luffy get that right? Yeah, Luffy. Speaking of Luffy, Speaking see, of Luffy see that transition? Yeah, I did Ooh, I see what Mom did there. Did you see that, guys? Without even, that's how you know mother-son <laughs> combo right there. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Netflix live action Sma- Smash One Piece wins explosive reception from being I know this is the third podcast we've talked about One Piece, but that's how big this is. Well, we did leave it with you wanted my opinion. Yeah. I gave it last Fans time. Fans coming. So it is the number to- one show in 84 countries. Yes. <laughs> one Piece is explosive reception. Fans say the remake and, far surpasses and, and, expectations. And remember, out of those 84, out of all the countries in the world, only 84 of them have like TV. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably all of it. It's basically we're shooting yeah. 100% here. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> and yeah, they had more viewers than on Netflix uh, than, say, season one of the Adams Family remake, which I think wow. that was really big. Season four, Stranger Things. Interesting, though, this show cost $17 million per episode as opposed to one of the more expensive ones ever, which was Game of Thrones, which was $3 million. That's a huge amount of money really, they pay on I, this. I think so. Uh, ready? I think I'll take one even further. I believe the Mandalorian. How much money does the Mandalor? Uh, no, not Mandalorian. What's the? No, yeah. What's Star, the Star Wars, Wars Mandalorian. One? Yeah. Does the the new one? Star Wars. Mandalorian show. One Piece has the Guinness Book World record title of most copies published wow. for a same comic book by a same author. Wow. How many? How many do you think he's produced? So, uh, what's his, who? The, the writer for the One writer. Piece. So. He has the most copies published for the same comic book by the same author. 
You have to make that distinction. Oh, wow. So Give me a ballpark number. Man. 200? 416 million 566 oh. up until 2022. Oh, I guess I didn't understand the... So co- that's how many copies he's done. That's how many copies sold. he's sold. sold yeah. Holy shit. What's his name? I don't know. I don't know. Ichi Uchi Ori? I can't pronounce it. Uh, One Piece author. The writer knows already Ichiro what the... O- it, he already knows the ending. He has it in his head. But he chooses to continue going with this because he likes to... You know, oh, yeah. have these storylines added and characters. Oh, added that's the to One it. Piece net worth. Oh, geez, look at that. That show is worth twenty billion dollars. Holy shit! Well, the anime series and manga are currently valued at twenty point nine. Uh, but so that's this. That's what you were watching. The anime. That's right. The, yeah, yeah, the yeah, One yeah. Piece. Still, think about that. A, a comic book worth twenty point yeah. nine million. What do you think uh, Marvel is? No, I have no idea. Do you think it beats out Marvel? Marvel Comics net worth. But I think Marvel be? is multiple. Oh, 53 billion. Okay, like so Mar- Marvel's multiple, whereas One Piece is one, one author, yeah, one yeah, story yeah. that I he's just, carried still, through. That's crazy yeah. to think about. But I just, well, the, my, my point of saying this was there were a lot of comments in that article if the listeners take a look at it. Um, because you had questions like, oh, for all the true fans, I don't know how we'll like it. They were very impressed by how... Um, how they were able to translate the anime onto the TV and the characters that they were all very well done, that it very much follows the storyline. So, oh, the evil ones they even said were very well done. Yeah. I Again, I haven't seen it, but... Well, uh, you you know. How about you, you keep, watch it? You keep bitching me to watch did, it, yeah, and I did. Yeah, but I already did. know how the series goes. Well, you know, for somebody... A lot of other people have seen the whole series, and they've been watching this, and they've yeah. been trying to find out if it's or, worth it for them. you... Watch the rest of the season. Tell me how it is. <laughs> Why don't you watch it? Why am I watching it? You know more because about it than I you're do. looking for more shows to watch. Well, that's true. Kenny's going to be so excited to hear that mom's into One Piece. If I have time, I'll take a look at the next couple of them. They already announced the next season. But uh, so, as I was saying, so The Mandalorian takes 15 million per episode to mm-hmm. make. This one you said 17. 17. Yeah. Game of Thrones was 3 million, but Can that I was honest, seven years ago. Uh, my guess is most of it's in the. GFX, like the graphics and stuff. Probably. Because when you actually Not the look actors. At, yeah. When you look at the uh when you look at the actual sets and stuff, there's no way the Mandalorian must beat them out in the sets themselves. I've never really seen the Mandalorian, but I've seen do you know some people even commented on how good the hat was? <laughs> That's pretty accurate. It's a pretty damn accurate hat. Well, even the clothing. But oh, so there was a lady. Oh, someone tried to bring in race into One Piece. Of course. Right? And they said it's disgusting how they didn't make all the characters Asian because, right, it's a... Anime yeah, from right. Japan. But each person... See, this is where no one does the research. Yeah. If you knew the show, you know that each person's from a different country. Yeah. So, uh, Luffy's Brazilian. Yes. He's from Brazil. Right. So, uh... And there were yeah, Asian it, characters yeah. in there. There's, but... there's only one person in there that's... Like, in the show, that's actually Japanese. And, of course, they have to be samurai. <laughs> Yeah, Zoro's the only one, yeah. So <laughs> not that it's stereotypical or anything. <laughs> yeah. So again, it, it is amazing. This is I like it because it opens the door for so many other shows that Yeah. Like it, if Netflix goes to only anime, I'll be happy, but I know that that's not good for the masses. And as I said that it it's not a bad it's not gory, it's not bad language, it's not for somebody who's looking for something for younger people to watch, know. it's not bad. There's just some, fighting, there's but some it's bad. not I don't know about that. It gets pretty bloody. Not in what I saw in the first episode. Like, they don't make a point of making it bloody bloody. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. But And he's um, you haven't even he's seen, a good character. You haven't he's even good... seen the main fight that everyone's talking about yet. You want, My mom watched the first episode. She's like, I'm done. No, I just got a <laughs> feel for it. But I can keep watching it. I just kind of sense where it's going. You can't. You're not going to sense where it's going. No. It's not possible. No. After I've been 12, watching after twelve hours, it gets really good. I've been watching. <laughs> I've been watching for fifteen years. I still don't know where it's going. Jeez. So, but I, I am interested in. Uh, he said he knows how he's going to end it. Which... I'm telling you, you mark my words. It's going to be some sort of feel good. The one treasure was the friendship that they all had, or some goofy thing like that. Usually, animes are pretty good about that because they're so. A long time ago, right? this is, if you want me to sum up anime for you, one, oh jeez. So when I was that kind of time when I was a. Uh, when I when I first got into TV shows like animes basically, 
um, I made the decision that I was going to watch like every single one thinking that there's not hundreds of thousands of them. <laughs> but I watched the show. I forget what it was called, but it was like a rated R show. So it was like for adults. And I watch it and I was like, what's this show about? Because I'm watching through it. It's about – so this kid goes to like a new dimension, meets these kids that got stuck in this school. So it's 12 episodes of being in a school. Mm-hmm. right? And I'm like, oh, I, I guess the rating was wrong. Literally the last episode – Everyone gets murdered. The, the portal, like, he's like, oh. the portal comes back to go back to the world. Everyone's able to leave because he's been trying to get him out. So it, it's a scene of him holding the girl's hand because she, she, she and him are the last two to go through. Yeah. And she goes through, the camera's on his face, basically. And all of a sudden, you hear, like, a crunch. The portal closed and he has her arm. Ew. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, this is how the show ends? <laughs> I was like, oh my god! So now he's stuck there alone. He's stuck there alone with That's an arm. How it ends? <laughs> There's nothing after that. I was like, dear god! So you never know where it's gonna go. Right. So. That's kind of depressing. Yeah, exactly. I, it's a feels good show too. You're like, oh, they're just going through class. They're making their classes together. They're having fun on the playground. <laughs> Shit. And then uh, that ending, and you're just like, oh, what? <laughs> Oh, I wish I could go that. Maybe show. they I were thinking like there would be another season, but there was no money. So that, that, happens, that, happens. that happens a lot, too. Right? That's what happened to Bleach. Bleach had that 10-year yeah. hiatus yeah. where I was like, what am I going to do with the rest of my life for 10 years? It happens to a lot of shows, surprisingly. They have these bad cliffhangers that they never go back and finish. Yeah. People get so annoyed. So, uh, What other ones do we have? I think we had one more, we which did? was kind of the big one for me. Oh. This is YouTube. YouTube is changing how ads work. God, let me tell you guys something. I had a chicken sandwich before this, and it's coming back up. <laughs> the sodium levels were too high. So YouTube is now changing how their ads work. and Wash it down with the fish food. Yeah, yeah. Later tonight, <laughs> I'm having my Ben and Jerry's fish food during the UFC fights with the boys. But, um, okay, so YouTube made some big changes. And did, we could debate on this one. I think you and I could have a good conversation. So what they're doing, whenever I post a video and I monetize that video – Mm-hmm. I get to pick. Uh, do I want to do pre-roll ads, mid-roll yep, ads, and that. final ads? Right, like ads at the end. So they said, and I could decide if those are skippable or not. Right. So they said we're not going to do skippable anymore. There's no skippable ads, and it's only at the beginning and the end. They're getting rid of the, the in, in between ones. So this is where I, as a YouTuber, say good because that means that people can't abuse ads in the middle there's nothing worse yeah, than watching a video and let's let's say it's a movie mm-hmm. and there's just an ad smack middle mm-hmm. now youtubers can actually pick those ads and i've seen some ads where it's like every 30 seconds there's an advertisement because they're trying yeah. to milk as much money as possible and sometimes they're not skippable so that's how youtubers who aren't here for the creativity well that they want to incentivize you to pay the upcharge to get the ad free service Yes, but YouTube makes that. Not we don't get any money for that. No, I know, but they want to incent people to to, to I'm saying upgrade. That, I'm saying the user could put those on there. YouTube doesn't decide where the ads go. Users can add. They want to do that because they want the ad revenue. So that's why I'm okay because YouTubers, like the ones that don't actually care about content and just want money. But isn't it a win-win for YouTube? So they're well, they going to load it with the ads, ad revenues or too. yeah, they get a piece of the ad right. revenue. Right, or somebody who gets frustrated with all the ads is going to upgrade for a an ad-free streaming. Is that an option? Oh yeah, with yeah, yeah. You're looking yeah, at so ads from that money. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, but like to me, it's disgusting when a YouTuber does that. Like an actual YouTuber, not YouTube, puts 30 advertisements yeah. in there. It's stupid. Like yeah. I don't want to watch your show, your channel. So YouTube talked about also getting rid of ad blocker, which is a problem for users that use ad blocker because I I hate the ads on YouTube. I think they suck most of the time. <laughs> so they're doing that, and then also on. On live streams, you can't. Um, so there, there will be random times through the live stream of advertisements. I can't decide that. So I actually don't even monetize our um, uh, live streams just because oh. there's we do so much it doesn't really matter, uh, and it, that would be so annoying to have advertisements. But besides that, sorry, that's kind of besides the point. I don't have a problem with this because I understand we need advertisements. Yeah. Obviously, that's where we YouTubers make our money, except for donations and sponsorships. But hint, hint. Yeah, but I do understand why it would be annoying that you can't do the. I can't say skippable or non-skippable anymore. 
Like I purposely make oh. all my advertisements skippable, if someone so wants that to people, skip it, yeah. yeah, if someone wants to skip it, they can. Right. So I don't have much of a problem with this, which is why the people that are complaining have to be the ones that are only here for the money. Yeah, right. That's really it. That's really the only people. I believe that. that. But again, I also understand that they say. Well, the argument is YouTube's catering more towards the companies than to the creator. My answer to that's always the fact that we make a single dollar off the videos that we make is a blessing. Mm -hmm. Also, I guess you being able to milk the advertising. Well, it's a blessing, but it's a mutual relationship. You're giving them content. Right, exactly. So, uh, but I would also say that YouTube, uh, well, it's tough. I, I agree. Otherwise, it's just a channel that runs ads. If you didn't have content yeah. from people, you'd have no place to put these ads. It would just be a channel that, change, that right. runs ads. But you would make money off sponsorships and stuff as well. So like most YouTubers nowadays, because ad revenue hasn't been good in the last five years. Right. Most big creators like uh, podcasts and whatever, they make all their money off the sponsors that give money anyway. So like uh, like third party yeah. organizations like Blue Chew or Manscaped, whatever. That's where the money is. So to complain about ad revenue stuff, I understand YouTube's not getting a cut of the sponsorships that you make, so they have to do something yeah. here. So I, from a business perspective, I completely understand YouTube's point of view here. Yeah, yeah. For me, I'm more mad at the YouTubers who are putting these ads every five minutes and going, where's my money? You know? Yeah. So that to me, I'm But not, who wants not, to watch yeah. those sites? They're, they're hurting themselves. Because even you said, I don't want to sit there and watch yeah. ad after ad after ad. You'll lose patience. And you'll go on to something else. Yeah, I don't know. Again, they just, I guess they could just they somehow do it. Some people will just watch it. Well, I think it's more so for the rollover. So, like, let's say I'm watching a video yeah. and it moves on to the next video and I fell asleep or something. Yeah. It'll go through their video anyway because they, they make it so that it becomes it – forced, it's forced into the recommended, if oh. that makes sense. Yeah. So they kind of banking on the fact that they'll get lucky – Let's say let's say a thousand viewers come to that channel you just made and they all fell asleep. It's a great channel. Made, <laughs> yeah, you just made ten. Well, I like they fell asleep beforehand or right, something. Right, right, right. But right. like yeah. YouTube, I also wish that YouTube had more um, specific ads. So here's what I mean by that, and why I also do kind of like this. So for ASMR uh, videos, mm -hmm. you know the ASMR is the audit 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 Thomas sensory the relaxing videos. Yes. Right. I was thinking the other day, I was like, what if you're just watching one of those and all of a sudden, like, you're relaxed, the volume's yeah, something all the way up, <laughs> and all of a sudden you're like, Ford F-150, yeah, 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 yeah. you're just like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, you're trying to sleep. And so you, you, know? can't, uh, you can't select that. You can't choose so the So I they can post turn it. off the ads during mid-roll, but now, or you would put it as skippable. At the end. Yeah. So now those ASMR artists can't do that. I would think that YouTube would just say, oh, this is an ASMR video, so let's make a quiet advertisement cater to ASMR give them that rather than Ford F-150 do they have that level of uh, no I'm catering? saying that's what they should oh because like for instance if I'm a gamer you should have gaming ads not Ford F-150 well, right you have, you have yeah. categories right yeah. when you sign up of just what like you are Cartoon Network doesn't have alcohol yeah. commercials same, right, same right, right 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 so that to me is where YouTube like I think there's better ways of doing this obviously we've always had that problem with YouTube the, the transparency and all that stuff right but then I, I think we all kind of severely underestimate how big YouTube is with videos all mm -hmm. over the world. Yeah. So you 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 can't just cater to us Americans. You have to cater to everyone. Yeah. Right? So. I, but again, human nature me. is the same all over, though. Really, and I've had sites have gone to. I don't know if it's specifically YouTube. They give me a prompt. If you would like to watch this video ad free, sign up for the service. Yeah, we have YouTube Red. S right. Which is so the, they're getting money either way. And I don't know which is more valuable to YouTube, if I sign up for a service or if I sit and watch 10 <clears throat> different yeah, Well, ads. It, it doesn't matter because YouTube – so, well, it matters but not really. So they make money off Red. Cool. Let's say – let's say Mem – uh, That's a membership. That's a membership, yeah. Mm -hmm. But also whatever ad revenue I make, they take – I think it's 30%. So they're still making money off your ads either way. Whether right, you have it or not. but somebody's crunched those numbers to say what's more valuable. Is it easier for me to have Chris load up 
but do I make more money if Chris, Chris loads up on ads with the revenue? Right, but smart or am I making more from the if I, membership? If I bump up the ads, no one's going to watch. Like if you have too many ads, you're going to click off eventually. Right, uh, and there's probably a limit. I'm sure there's somebody who right, looked I, at I all the data. God, I saw a video once that was an hour long. And you know, if you've seen the bar, it has like the little yellow markers. Yeah, yeah. Every H it was an ad. Seconds I know. Was an ad. I was like, what is this? I've had that too. And I've been very frustrated to the point where I'm like, oh, maybe I should just sign up. And then you wonder why up. ad blocker exists. You know? Well, yeah. You gotta be smarter with the ads, but yeah. All right. Either way, we just did an hour six. I know we, we had some questions, but we'll do those next time. Um, Must be getting close to fight time. Well, not just that. We just did an hour six. I'm trying to stay under an hour and a half. Oh, there's okay. not that much else to talk about. Uh, we could have done the states, but we'll save that for ne next time too. Um, That's the second week you said we pass over in the states. I know, but also everyone knows that we know the states, Mom. We're I don't think I know all the states. Presidents, yeah, but I don't know the states. <laughs> Antarctica. No, you could ask <laughs> capitals and <to> stuff. <laughs> yeah. Antarctica, Brazil. I am. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we'll end it. If you want those, those are countries, precious. <laughs> um. So anyway, we'll end it there. Uh, the Continent. only things I have to promote. So I only put out Continent. one video this week because Wednesday I was super busy with other stuff. So we had the podcast for last week. Today I posted a video. So Saturday I posted a video on um, a zombies map that Jason and I did because we haven't done a zombies map in a long time. We finished all of our speed runs for Oct September, October. So those will be posted next month. And then I already picked the four for December. So we should be good. December. Wow. Yeah, because those it's are the ones far that out. No, uh, November, and then those get posted in December. Uh oh. So yeah, so that's how we'll do it. Those people want to take a while to learn. But anyway, besides that, social media down below, promo codes down below, Discord down below, other stream links down below, and I will see you guys at stream. And Mom will see you guys hopefully next week. We might have some guests on uh, more more as we go. And one thing I wanted to do, where's my mark? In other words, mom's getting bumped. Yeah, mom's like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so one thing that I wanted to do, I don't know if this pen will work. I want to get a new one. Mom's getting bumped. But I think for now on, and I like this idea, just because one day we can. I get to autograph uh, the tablecloth? Yeah, we'll have everyone start signing the tablecloth who comes. And then after X amount of years of doing this, we'll do something with it. So I don't know where I want to write my name. Do you want to go first, Mom? See if it works. Well, it's your, you should do Oh, uh, see if it works. I, I guess I should be the we got to practice it. it right? You should, but you got to practice Ooh. it on something first. I well, I, I... You should do yours well, right in the middle. When people come and do autographs, right, when people ask me for autographs on the side of the street, <laughs> I, uh... So I'm going to do mine right here. Oh, yeah, that, you know what? That's not bad. The okay. hard part's just doing it on clock, so... Eh. Uh, yes. Oh, you can't even see that. That's too light. It's too light, but I'll I'll probably get bigger markers just so I can. I just realized I did my last name with print. What am I doing? You see? see. I didn't think you knew how to print. Yeah, <laughs> you never I, I used to print that. as a kid, which is so ironic. Most people go the other way. Later, with when we get fatter ones. Yeah, I need a better pen. Yeah, just sign because gonna... we can do it over. Oh. Just pick a spot and then because I'm gonna. But I get to write something though, right? You can if you want. I guess see how well it does. I don't want to it's not bad. It's light, but again, we'll, I'll go over it with the marker. Oh, yours looks way better than mine. <laughs> Mom's just slaughtering the tip of that pen. So, yeah, maybe after a couple years. Maybe when we get to Podcast 100, then we'll, we'll everyone, will, everyone will sign it. We'll do I put on. Mom Katushi? What do people know me as? No, nah, you put put your full name. Oh yeah, that looks so good. I don't even know what you wrote, but Kenny, I'll see it. Nothing tastier than the cake shop. <laughs> Love <laughs> Irene Katushi. Got even it. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but even in pen writing on a uh, whatever this is cloth, my mom's handwriting is still phenomenal. <laughs> uh, Catholic <laughs> school kid. Yeah. Catholic I was school. too. Look at mine. Mine looks like shit, but. Yeah, so I have to get thicker markers, but thicker this marker. was a good test one. So yeah. we'll have Kenny Michael sign it. I might have to sign Alan's for him because the odds of Alan coming back before it gets signed is. But not Dad, because he hasn't come on. Dad, I, I, we said you Dad's have, to, have to be a guest to sign the. I table think block. when Super Bowl comes around, we'll have to force Dad to do it. Because <laughs> what we'll do is we'll do like a watch party, and then we'll watch it here with Kenny, Mike, and I. That's true. Yeah. 
Or Mr. Grad. I have Mr. Grad is here. They're not going to do it for Super Bowl. They're not going to be here for Super Bowl. They won't? Probably not. Why Kenny, won't they be here for Super Bowl? Kenny probably be with his friends. Mike's going to be at school. It's his last Super Bowl of college. That's a good point. Although, was he Shit. home last year for it? <laughs> I can't yeah, remember. I no, yeah, we were all here. Okay. For Super Bowl. Fudgy the Whale. Remember, Michael doesn't miss a Fudgy the Whale. <laughs> Michael doesn't miss a Fudgy. But. All right, guys. We will see you next week.